Colour is such an integral part of the cinema going experience. It can change how we feel about a scene, draw our eyes to an important detail, or symbolically represent something about a character or an event. While modern filmmakers have the convenience of digital cameras and colour correcting software to capture different colours for their films, early filmmakers had to rely on a variety of photochemical processes to bring colour to the screen. So let's examine some of these early methods and take a look at one of the best examples of early colour film, the 1926 silent movie, The Black Pirate. Hello and welcome to 100 Years of Cinema. We'll be taking a look at at least one film a year from 1915 onwards to track the evolution of film over the last century. In 1935, Pioneer Pictures released Becky Sharp, the first film to be shot entirely in Technicolor Process 4, which gives a full range of natural colour and it was the result of decades of experimentation and trial and error, trying to bring full colour to motion pictures. This process would later be used in films like The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. But prior to that, realistic and vibrant colour couldn't be faithfully reproduced on screen. Before 1935, there were a variety of methods to bring colour to the screen. One of the earliest and most primitive methods was hand tinting where filmmakers would painstakingly hand paint each individual frame, seen here used for the first time in the 1895 film The Annabelle Serpentine Dance. This technique would be used extensively by filmmakers like George Millier in a film like A Trip to the Moon, but it wouldn't be until 1902 that filmmakers would capture colour on celluloid. An English photographer named Edward Turner created some of the earliest colour films by filming three separate shots in red, blue and green, and then projecting them on top of each other to create colour. Although his first process was too unpredictable for commercial use, he would later go on to create Cinema Colour, one of the first commercially successful colour processes. Due to the expense of making colour films, many filmmakers chose just to colour individual seams or even individual items, like with the Handstuggle colour process, which involved isolating sections of the frame adding up to three colours and then printing the images together into one strip of film using the new dye transfer process, seen here in the Cecil B. DeMille film Joan the Woman, used to give the flames a realistic yellow colour. Technicolor started experimenting with colour film back in 1916 by projecting black and white film through red and green filters. Unfortunately, this required a specially designed projector that was too prone to jamming to use in a theatre. However, by 1922, Technicolor had started using its Process 2. A beam splitter was used to expose two frames at the same time, one through a red filter, one through a green filter. These two frames were cut out and glued back to back to create one roll of film, which could be shown through any standard projector. And although the film itself was prone to warping and scratching, this process really marks the beginning of a reliable colour film system and it was in this process which Douglas Fairbanks would create his adventure film, The Black Pirate. The Black Pirate wasn't the first feature film to be shot entirely in colour. It wasn't even the first film to be shot in Technicolor Process 2, but it was the first film that paid careful consideration to colour and how it can affect the story. The Black Pirate, starring Douglas Fairbanks, tells the story of a man seeking revenge on a group of pirates responsible for the death of his father. He infiltrates the crew under the guise of the Black Pirate and sets about bringing the men who killed his father to justice. Due to the difficulty keeping the technical camera in focus, Fairbanks had to tone down some of the complicated action sequences seen in films like Robin Hood or Zorro in favour of a more straightforward action adventure film with a focus on a strong story and a smaller number of heavily choreographed action set pieces including the first instance of a pirate sliding down a sail using his knife. Fairbanks spent considerable time and money on colour tests for the film. One of the issues with Technicolor Process 2 was that it could only replicate a small portion of the colour range. Green and red filters were chosen because they gave a faithful representation of human skin tones, but blue colours were difficult to reproduce on screen. That's why the characters and their clothes seem natural, but the sky and the sea come out almost black. However, by selecting the right colours to put in front of the camera, something like blue could be produced, as seen here in Fairbanks' love interest, evoking images of the Virgin Mary and giving the impression of innocence. 
Similarly, both Fairbanks and the pirate captain are shown in dark black and green, whereas the innocent captain of the captured ship is shown in white. While by today's standard, this may seem a little crude, for the first time, filmmakers were using colour to tell us something about the story. Thanks for watching 100 Years of Cinema. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe so we can travel through the next 100 years of cinema together.